What's up guys, Sila here and I'm back with another video and this time we're going to be running through the 8.1.5 Brawlers Guild fights from rank 1 all the way up to rank 8. So it's going to be each of the fights for each of those ranks. I did make a video previously showing off the new fights that were coming in 8.1.5 but people requested a video showing every single one of the fights so I thought I'd do that in one video. If you check the description down below, there's going to be timestamps for each of the individual fights. So if you want to jump to a specific fight you're stuck on, you can check the description and do that. Otherwise, you can watch through the full video and see the full ranks 1s to rank 7 fights, which will eventually get you to the final rank, which is rank 8. So the first fight up is rank 1, and the first fight of rank 1 is Bruce. Very easy fight, there's not really too much to this, but essentially when he's doing chomp, Move out of the front of him and you won't die. Even if you're a little bit slow, you can take probably one hit, but there's no reason you should. The second he starts doing it, just move to his side or his back and you'll take no damage from that ability. That's all he does and just kill him down after that. The next fight up is Thog Hammer Space. This is the, the second fight of rank 1. And this is fairly simple too. He's going to melee you for the most part. The melee damage is quite low, so you don't need to worry about that. And then eventually he's going to do this like frontal cone of hammers. When he starts doing that, just move out of the way. It doesn't do that much damage anyway, but if you are lower geared and it's, it's maybe doing too much, simply move out of the way and you're good to go. And then just DPS him down and you should be fine there. The next fight up is Grandpa Grumplefoot, uh, gl or Grumplefoot, I should say. And it's quite an easy fight as well. Essentially, you want to stay away from the red bears. You can go towards the blue ones if you want to, because they heal, but you, you shouldn't really need to. And interrupt his cast. And then when he hits 50%, the bears will start kind of moving towards you. Just move away from them and finish up the boss. It, it shouldn't be that difficult. If you are struggling with the later phase, maybe save your cooldowns for then instead of the beginning. But I don't really see that being too much of a problem. The next fight up is Ash Katsum. And this is kind of difficult, especially for melee players. But essentially, every time he does his cast, he's going to summon a beast that will run out from where he's currently facing. So what you want to do is every time that happens, you want to be sidestepping and continuously running around him in a circle, but eventually the pets that you summoned will hit the walls, turn around and come back at you. So you want to be very aware of your position and continuously trying to dodge all the little critters that are running around the arena. But if you're melee and you continuously circle in around him, you should for the most part be safe. Just watch out for the ones that are returning back towards you and kind of try and dodge those as well. As range, you want to seat yourself kind of towards the edge of the arena and just move a little bit when he's facing towards you with the uh, the next cast and you should be fine there too. Next up we have rank 2 and the first fight of rank 2 is Blat. A fairly simple fight once again just make sure you're always targeting the main body of Blat and do DPS to it and just kill it. He'll split into multiple parts and those will chase you down and hit you as well but just keep DPSing down the main body. You can cleave if you want to but DPS down the main body and once the main body dies Blat will die and you've won the fight. Simple as that. If you're taking too much damage just kite a little bit faster because the Additional blobs of black move a little bit slower than black. So if you move in and kite in continuously backwards, then you shouldn't be taking much damage. The next fight of rank 2 is Philip Carter Tracy, and this one's fairly simple as well. Every time he teleports behind you doing the murderous thrash, I think it's called, you do basically just turn your character to face him, otherwise you'll take a bunch of damage and you might even die from it. So just make sure you're continuously turning to face him every time he dashes behind you. And at one point he will split into like three different clones, one will be far away and two will be kind of near you. Just make sure your character's in a position where it's facing both of them and you'll take no damage from that as well. When he gets to 50% he will turn into a human and he'll do two mechanics here. One will knock you back dealing a bit of damage, not too much to worry about. And the other is an interruptible bullet. Just interrupt that. Try and wait till the cast is a little bit further through to interrupt it, but it shouldn't make too much difference and then just kill him off there. The next fight up is Johnny Awesome, and this one's not too difficult either. He's going to have his cat continuously attacking you. He's going to put these kind of rain of arrows down on the ground. So just be a little bit careful if you melee because they can crowd the arena and be like right on top of him. So just try and be in a position where you've got still a little bit of room to still hit him. And eventually he's going to do like a kill shot, like a quite long cast, and it'll have an arrow on the ground. When that happens, stand between his cat and him so that the ability hits his cat. And then he'll start resurrecting his cat and this is the point where you can just kind of kill him off because he's not going to be doing anything for a really long period of time. The next fight up is Mama Storm Style and this one's a little bit difficult if you don't know what you're doing but fairly simple once you know the idea behind it. Early on in the fight she's going to hit you with like a, a, an urn or a pot and there's going to be this kind of soot on the ground. And when you stand in it it's going to deal a little bit of damage over time 
But this is key because when this massive wave comes, you want to stand inside that pile and basically it'll stop you from being frozen and dying pretty much instantly. So make sure you're stood in that every single time the wave comes and you should be A-OK. -okay. She does summon a little add as well and you could CC it or kill it off. It doesn't have too much HP or you could ignore it and just finish Mama Stormstart depending on how much damage you've got. Now we're on to rank 3 and the first fight of rank 3 is Oso the Betrayer. A fairly simple fight. The first ability is Shotgun Roar and you basically just want to move out at the front of the boss when this is happening. Easy as that. If you get hit, you're going to die, so just move out at the front. The next ability is Grizzle Leap or Grizzly Leap, and there'll be a circle on the ground and just move out of it. Um, you'll get stunned if you stand inside of that, but quite simple. So just basically move out of things that look like they're going to hurt and kill off the boss. The next fight up is Clunk, and this is an extremely easy fight. It's basically just a bit of a DPS race, but he doesn't have that much HP anyway. He only has one mechanic. Basically, you'll see a circle around him. He's going to do a cast. Once the cast ends, anyone inside that circle will die. And he is going to be slowly pushing you towards him. But it's quite a slow push. You, if you stand on the edge of the room as a caster, it will take quite a while for you to be sucked into him. And if you melee, just basically hit him until the cast gets fairly close, maybe 10% 10, 10, uh, 10 left. Move out, let the cast finish, and then move back in and continue killing him. Pretty simple fight. The next fight is one of the newer ones and this is Farmer Zhuang Su and there's going to be a bunch of dirt piles on the ground and he's going to do a, an ability called like water spout or something. It'll summon a water tornado that will fire in a line directed at wherever he's facing and he'll be facing you. So when that happens try and have yourself aimed at the dirt piles and try and hit as many as possible. When you hit the dirt piles one of two things is going to happen. A healthy vegetable will spawn or a like unhealthy one will spawn. If it's a healthy one, you want to stand inside it and you'll get a damage increase. If it's an unhealthy one, you want to put the boss inside it and he'll take more damage. And the idea is you want to get a few stacks of these and then once you've got enough stacks, maybe three or four, uh, maybe a little bit more depending on your gear, that's when you want to use all your cooldowns and try and do as much damage as possible. Don't use cooldowns early on because he's going to take very little damage. The final fight of rank 3 is Uhuru, and this is quite a difficult fight. It was previously one of the last fights from all the Brawlers guilds. And one thing to note though is when he first spawns, you have about 3 seconds, maybe a bit less, to hit him with spells and he'll take damage. So if you have a heavy hit and instant spell, I would use that on him the second he spawns. Just does a bit of damage to him, makes the last bit of the fight a little bit easier. So I would recommend that. Once phase 1 begins after he puts up his shield, he's not going to be damageable anymore. So what you want to do then is look out for large glowing balls in the room. Uh, dodge the little ones that are going to be bouncing around and they deal quite a lot of damage. But look out for the large ones, run over to them and kind of touch them. And what will happen is an angel type mob will spawn. DPS it down and eventually, don't kill it, but DPS it down. And eventually it will start doing a charge. When it does that charge, you want to run over to the boss. Let the mob charge towards you and then run away from the boss as the mob is charging at you. Because if you stand on the boss when the charge finishes, you'll take damage and probably die. So the idea is you want to keep the angel ad a little bit away from the boss. Don't stand directly on top of the boss with the angel mob because you won't give yourself enough distance to move. So try and keep them on the edge of the room. When they start doing charge, run over to the boss. And then once the charge is complete and he's running at you, then move away from the boss. The charge will land on top of the boss and rinse and repeat that three times and the shield will be broken. Then you'll be into phase two and there's two major mechanics here. The first is he'll do a bunch of orbs around you. If you walk through the orb, you are going to take damage over time. There's not really a good way of avoiding the orb, so I would recommend using a defensive here if you've got to. Or if you have a spell that allows you to kind of jump or teleport over them, then that's going to help you as well because you can completely avoid the damage. His other main mechanic is he'll do a full heal. So make sure you are saving your interrupt for that because if he gets that off, it's pretty much a wipe. Use all your cooldowns here and kill off the boss and you should be good. Now we're on to rank 4 and the first boss up is Ouroboros. And this has a few mechanics but honestly it isn't that deadly. Uh, the first one is Dark Reach or Wretch. And this is a spell you can use like CC on to stop it. It'll deal a chunk of damage to you if you let it go off. But it isn't that deadly, so it isn't the end of the world if it does go off. But you can avoid damage there by stunning him or something along those lines. Next up, you'll put a bunch of these void circles on the ground. You want to move out of those, and they will slow you and deal a good chunk of damage if you're stood in them. So just avoid those. They're quite easy to avoid. Next up, he'll do this blast in front of him. It'll be in a direct line in front of the boss wherever you're facing currently. So move out of that when that's happening. And then he's going to do the torrent, which is basically a full spin around. 
So when that's happening, just keep running away from the beam, wait for it to end, and then you can go back to DPS in the boss. That's pretty much it. It isn't that dangerous of a fight, so you should be A-OK -okay with this one. Next up is Sanoriac, and this is one of the older fights. It can be hard if you don't know what's going on, and it'll probably kill you if you went into it blind, but it isn't that bad of a fight. He's going to have three mechanics. The first one is Fireball. It does a chunk of damage, and honestly, this ability is a little bit of a bait because you'll see it and you'll want to interrupt it. I wouldn't advise interrupting it. I'd save your interrupt for a spell he does later on. Um, just take the damage. It'll do a little chunk, but it isn't too deadly. The next one up is Firewall, and he's going to kind of enclose a circle of fire around you. But what you'll know is there's a square, like a, a gap in the firewall. So when that happens, you want to run through the gap before it cla uh, collapses around you. It's fairly easy to get out of. You just need to be looking for that gap and be ready for it. And you should be fine with that. If you don't, you're probably going to die. And then the final ability is Pyroblast. This is quite a long cast, and this is the one I would recommend interrupting. It's going to do a big chunk of damage to you and put a dart on you as well. So definitely get that one interrupted. Outside of that, just rinse and repeat the mechanics, and you'll be able to kill the boss. The third fight of rank 4 is Spy Master, and this is kind of an interesting fight, but it isn't too dangerous once you know what's going on. There's going to be a bunch of kind of items around the room, you know, a dog and a turtle and all this kind of things. And the boss will give you a hint to which one he wants you to go stand near. He'll say, oh, it's cute and fluffer. Okay, it's the dog, or it has a hard shell, it's the turtle. Um, so pay attention to his hints, and when he says his hint, look out for it in the, the voice chat, or the, the like text. When that happens, go run over to the thing you think it is, and after a few seconds, he'll make every other area explode, dealing quite a bit of damage. So you want to make sure you're paying attention to that. He also has one mechanic himself, which is Master Stroke, and this is going to be a cast, and when it finishes, he'll knock you back from in front of you and deal a good chunk of damage. So when that's happening, just move to the side and you should be okay there. Uh, just You just want to be paying attention to when this is happening, when the explosions are about to happen. You don't want to be in a position where you've got to run out of the like thing that you stood on to be safe, and you don't want to be somewhere where he's going to knock you out of it. So just pay attention to that, but it's not that big of a frontal cone. You can step to his side a little bit and not be hit. Um, and at one point, he's going to make everything go black, and he'll give you a hint towards what you're going to stand at. So you do need to have a little bit of memory of where things were and go and stand near the right one. But when I did this fight, when you were stood near the right one, there was like a white beam. So even if you're not too sure where it was, if you quickly run around, you might be able to find the one that's right anyway with the white beam. So there you go, but I would recommend just remembering where everything is. There's not that many, so it should be fine. The final fight of rank 4 is the Warhammer Council, and this is quite an easy fight. They all share HP, there's going to be three dwarves, so you can multi-dot them, you can cleave, you can do all that kind of stuff. And they don't do all a whole lot, each of them has one mechanic each. Uh, one does a lava burst, which you can interrupt. Uh, one's going to do like a, a whirlwind, which it deals okay damage, but you can kind of just move away from it. And the final is going to do this like charge. And once he does that, if you're in the way of the charge, you'll be stunned. And you can use the pools on the ground to interrupt the charge if you want to. But honestly, the, the fight is so easy anyway, it doesn't really matter. Even if you get hit by multiple of these mechanics, I don't see you dying. But just avoid them if you want to take less damage and do the fight properly. You know, try and interrupt the lava burst, try and keep away from the whirlwind. But in general, just cleave them down and they should die pretty damn quick. Now we're on to rank 5, and not that many ranks left to go for you to be done with the Brawlers Guild main fights. The first one up is Meatball, and this is a, an iconic fight, it's one of the more known ones, kind of like Bruce. It's quite easy though, essentially when the fight begins he's going to have a lot of HP. Don't worry too much about DPS in Meatball, but instead there's going to be a bunch of purple circles on the ground. Just run through them all. Keep going through them and going through them, and you'll gain more and more damage, and that'll mean you can kill the boss. So once you have a bunch of them, that's when you want to use all your cooldowns and DPSing down. It's kind of a DPS race. It, there's no real mechanics. He's going to do okay damage, but nothing too scary. It's just a case of killing him before you run out of time, which if you're collecting the purple orbs, you should be a okay with that. The next fight up is Millie Watt, and this one's not too bad. You do need some kind of talent or some kind of healing over time because she will be doing consistent damage to you. It isn't high damage, but if it does take you a while to do the fight, you might die from it. So just, just keep that in mind. Have some kind of trait or talent or spell that can give you a little bit of consistent healing. So the Buster Ray isn't anything you can really deal with. She's going to keep doing that to you, and you're going to take damage over time. That's where you're going to need the um, ability to help you through that. And then she's going to do two other mechanics. One is going to put a field on the ground. Uh, it's at your location, so just move out of it. And then eventually she's going to do this mag uh, mega fantastic discombobulator or something. When that's happening, 
when the cast is, you know, close to being done, stand inside one of the dynamite fields on the ground, and then the cast will end, you'll be turned into a chicken, which that'll instantly be broken, and then you can move out and you'll be fine there. And then just keep DPS in the boss until it dies. Next up is Tide Mistress Shellbreaker, and this is one of the newer fights, and it's quite interesting as well. Essentially what's going to happen, there'll be three NPCs in the arena, there'll be Tide Mistress, and then these two Tortolans, a little baby one and the main one. If the baby one dies, the fight becomes a lot harder, I'm pretty sure the, the big one enrages and kills you. So you pretty much lose the fight at that point. So the goal of the fight is to be doing DPS to Tide Mistress as much as you can, while also keeping the little baby one alive. There's going to be various mechanics in the room, there's going to be like a flame and a puffer fish and you want to be picking up the turtle and throwing, it, throwing him into a safe corner. Uh, try and be, be somewhere where you can keep control of him, not too far away from the boss and just keep picking him up and looking after him and then run over to the boss, get some DPS up time and then run back and pick him up and keep him safe because he is going to run over to these mechanics and basically kill himself. So do what you can to keep him alive, that is the main priority. The final rank 5 fight is Mingus Diggs and there's going to be these four statues around the room and they're going to continuously apply a damage over time dot to you and like that stacks up and stacks up so the idea behind the fight is to be bouncing between each of the pillars because whichever pillar you're near the stacks will stop happening so you want to take a couple of stacks DPS down one of the pillars move to the next pillar, DPS down the pillar, move to the next pillar, DPS down the pillar, move to the next pillar and keep following that moving after a few seconds to each pillar so your stacks aren't getting too high and eventually all the pillars will die and then Mingus Diggs himself will be attackable and then you can kill him off himself, he doesn't do a whole lot. The most difficult part of the fight is the four pillars. Um, you can do what I did and just basically nuke one down but it does make it a little bit awkward from moving from pillar to pillar because you kind of got to do a diagonal but it does mean you're going to be taking less stacks overall. So it's up to you, or you can kind of spread out your cooldowns so that they're all dying a little bit quicker each. And that's probably the best approach you can take. Now we're on to rank 6, and this fight is going to be Nibble. And this is an older fight, but it's quite a difficult one still. Basically, there's going to be a snake, and he's going to continuously spawn poison underneath him. If he stands in his own poison, then he'll gain a buff that will give him more damage and take less damage. So the idea of the fight is to basically kite him as much as possible around the room. You don't want to move too fast, but you don't want to move too slow. If you move too fast, you're going to end up running out of space. If you move too slow, though, you're going to end up uh, not moving him fast enough and he'll get stacks. He's also going to spit out some poison occasionally, and sometimes you'll get unlucky and it'll be in his path, and you'll take a stack. A stack or two isn't too bad, though. You can still get through the fight, but if you're taking multiple stacks, that's where things are going to get difficult and you're probably going to have to wipe. Now, I would recommend taking mobility spells here where you can cast on the move, especially if you're a caster. Things that allow you to cast on the move are a more mobile spec. It's going to help a crap ton for this fight. The next fight up is Stitches, and this one can be kind of difficult even though it only has two mechanics. The first is this massive green circle around him. The longer you stood inside it, you're going to get more and more stacks, and if you hit 10 stacks, you die. But the more stacks you take as well, the more damage it's going to do over time. And the other mechanic is if you move out of the green circle, he's going to hook you inside and it's going to apply a 10% minus move speed that stacks. So the idea is you want to stay on top of him the second he spawns, and you want to get between 6 and 8 stacks, ideally 8, but if you can't, 6 is okay-ish, but you are a bit tighter for DPS. And you want to be continuously running out and resetting your stacks before they hit 10, because if you hit 10, you die. Now, there is a sweet spot if you have mobility as well, like a movement speed increase. You can run out and instantly back in, and your stacks will reset, but he won't hook you in. So if you're quick enough, you can do that. Otherwise, you want to be moving out and in to the points where you're not gaining too many of the movement speed stacks to the point where you die. So you want to be DPSing him down as quickly as possible, managing your stacks and making sure you don't take too many of the hook stacks. The next fight up is another new one as well. And this is Robe Robber Robber. And once again, another interesting fight. Essentially, the fight will start off and he's going to be taking pretty much no damage. You want to be interrupting his cast every time he does it, and when that happens, he'll lose a piece of gear. And he's also going to have these tornadoes in the room too, which will, if you walk through them, you'll lose a piece of gear. If he walks through them, he'll lose a piece of gear. And it's kind of like a race to who loses all their gear, so basically just don't lose any. Once you lose all your gear, you'll be taking more damage, but once he loses all of his gear, he'll be taking more damage as well. So keep going until he's basically nude, you'll only have his underpants left and that's when you can use all your cooldowns and finish off the boss. 
be make, making sure you're continu- uh, consistently interrupting him as well and kiting him into the tornado so he loses the pieces of gear. The next fight up is Mecha Bruce, and this one is no joke. This becomes quite a difficult fight, especially if you don't have a whole lot of mobility or your damage is a little bit lower. Because what's going to happen is he's going to do his chomp, which, like old Bruce, you just move to the side of it. But then he's going to do this stronger, better, faster. And then he's going to stun you and then do the chomp again. So what you want to be doing is every time he does the chomp and does the the better, stronger, faster, you want to be getting as far away as possible so that when he does the stun, he has to run all the way over to you and then do his chomp. So it lets the stun timer run out and gives you enough time to move out of the way of the chomp. So just be getting as far away from him as possible before you get stunned. I go to the opposite corner of the room and then I get stunned and then it takes him a good chunk of time to get over to me, which gives me time to move out of the chomp and then I'm okay. But save your mobility and stuff to get out of the later chomps because you're going to have very little time to do it, especially if you have a teleport or something. Definitely want to be using that there. Now we're on to the final rank and that is rank 7. And the first fight up is going to be the Hyper Mega Mecha Seagull 9000. Not that difficult of a fight. There's only a few mechanics that actually happen. The first mechanic up is going to be this Mega Treagle. And it, it's going to spawn and basically just do like a, a rotating circle. Ed, so whenever that happens, just move away from it. It isn't that dangerous. It's not too bad. Just move away from the trees. Next up is going to be the beagles, and this is going to be a swarm of bees that will kind of move towards you. You don't want to go near those because it's going to take a lot of damage, it's going to kill you. And then finally, he's going to have the mecha weagles, which is going to be a spawn of little ads, and you want to AoE those down. Now, this is a little bit of a DPS race too because he's going to be doing more and more damage as the fight goes on, but just keep away from the beagles and the treagles and AoE down the weagles, and you should be fine. He will disorientate you every once in a while. But to avoid this, just be away from the other mechanics so that the, the dis- uh, disorientate isn't deadly. If you're near the beagles or something and you get disorientated or the treagle, then you're probably going to die from that. So just stay away from the other mechanics, DPS down the weagles, and kill the boss. The next rank 7 fight up is Fran and Rido, and this one's not too bad, but it can be deadly at times. They're basically two bosses, and you can either choose to kill them both at the same time or both separately. It's better to kill them both at the same time because it's going to make the fight easier, essentially. But if you kill one and then the other, the other one that's still alive is going to enrage, either doing more damage or doing the mechanics more often. So it's up to you how you want to approach the fight. I would recommend if you're more geared, you can kill one and then the other. But if you're lower geared, then try and kill them both at the same time because that ends up being the harder part of the fight. In terms of their normal mechanics, there's going to be a swirly on the ground. You want to move out of that. He's also going to do a net on you, and as you see, I get unlucky and I get netted into the swirler. So if I had some kind of root removal, like if I'd saved Tiger's Lust, I could have used that there. So just keep that in mind too. And when he does the throw net, you're also going to have this circle of explosives around you. You want to move away from those as quickly as possible because after a few seconds, those are going to explode and deal damage to you. So if you can, get away from them, get out of the throw net if possible, and basically try and reduce your damage there. But... That's about it, so just kill the the bosses down, choose if you want to kill them both at the same time or separately, and finish the fight. Only two more of the ranked fights left, and the next one up is Black Mange. Now this one's not too bad, there's only really two mechanics you need to worry about. One is he'll charge at you and deal some damage, it isn't that deadly. And then the next one is going to be these cannons, this is the main mechanic of the fight. So they're all going to have these like blast lines going towards them like fuse lines and when the fuse line reaches the cannon the cannon will explode so you don't want to be in front of that uh, that cannon when it's happening but they all have separate timers so you can essentially move from one to the other and then to the next one and then back and it's better to just focus on three or four cannons or two or three cannons rather than trying to do the full room it just makes it easier and it makes it easier to follow which one's going off so once one's exploded, you can move back to it because you'll have a really long period of time before you need to move to another one again. But just keep doing that, don't get hit by the cannons, and eventually kill the boss. The last fight up is going to be the Ogre Watch team, and this is kind of a difficult fight because there's three different guys. Two of them are going to be doing you know, fairly deadly mechanics. One is going to be doing this high noon. When it finishes, it's going to kill you. But I ended up killing the one that's doing high noon first. I don't know if I'd recommend that. 
I was just a little bit scared of the timer, but it is quite a long timer. You probably have enough time to kill one or two of the other bosses before you kill this one. So I definitely recommend killing one of them first that's not the high noon one, just so you, you don't have to deal with as many mechanics. So in terms of the other two, Hudson's going to have this barrier up and it'll absorb a chunk of damage. And then once the, the barrier is down, he's going to start doing other mechanics. He's going to do a Tesla cannon, uh, cannon, which is going to deal damage to you over time. And you can interrupt that and I would recommend it. He's also going to do a jump pack, which will make him leap to a location. So just try and get out of that if you can, but it isn't too scary. And the other mob, the little goblin, is going to do a mani maniacal laugh. And in if you're nearby him when that happens, you're going to do a lot of damage. So I would recommend moving away from that. You actually see I take the hit from that early on in the fight. And it puts me behind. I'm having to heal a little bit. So definitely move away from that. Pick which one you feel is more deadly. Kill it down and then kill the, the high noon one. And then finish off the final one. So it's basically just about dealing with the mechanics well. And you shouldn't take much damage. But if you do mess up, especially with that laugh mechanic. You're going to take a lot of damage and even potentially die. But just keep in mind the high noon isn't as scary as it looks. You do have quite a lot of time to get that done. And that is it, you've reached rank 8, and that is the end of the rank fights. So, that is all of the fights, and now you should be rank 8. Hopefully you enjoyed the Brawler's Guild, it is quite a fun experience, and hopefully this video helped you complete the fights. Look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya!